Hi everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost. Do you want to make something fun and simple and useful? Let's do it. Let's make this little envelope pouch. And uh, let me show you how easy it is to make. It's a lot of fun. It's made out of a book page and some seam binding. Uh, there's no glue in this version. And uh, even if you're a non-sewer, this is probably the most easiest quote unquote sewing um, that is ever done. And I think pretty much everybody can handle it. But I will uh, explain a few other techniques along the way how you can make these obviously with without sewing. Okay, so I just closed this one up with some seam binding. This is just regular uh, brown seam binding and I just wrapped it loosely around the outside as a removable. And as you can see, the prototype has uh, sewn seam binding through holes around the edges. It's been inked multiple colors to give it the aged look. It has a stamp and uh, a little uh, dried leaf on the front and a sticker. This is a Leonardo da Vinci book page that I use. It's about a nine by 12 inch book page. It's a bigger book page. You can make smaller, uh, you can use smaller book pages, but you will end up with smaller envelope pouches, or you can glue your book pages together to make a bigger sheet. Um, and I just put some stickers uh, uh, on the back here. And let me show you how we make this. It's very easy. So for this one, I used it to hold some ephemera that I might put into a journal coming up that I'm making. And it has, uh, I just put an old uh, negative in here. This is one of the, um, you know, I guess a Viewmaster thing from the Victorian days. I'm sure there's a name for that. <laughs> I don't know the exact name, sorry. Uh, and here's a handwritten letter. Um, uh, my dear, I want to express my best wishes and a piece of braille paper just for some tactile interest. But you could also use this to hold ephemera. Let's say you want, or um, embellishments. Let's say you wanted, you had a whole bunch of stickers and you wanted to store them inside here. And maybe on the outside, you might put a butterfly sticker to indicate this is your collection of butterfly stickers. So these can be very handy for the journal maker. Um, they would just be adorable in a little box. You could have a bunch of these and they could house different uh, embellishments uh, for your junk journals. Uh, so some fun, useful ideas there. And also let me just, where is my book? Um, I just wanted to show you how you could also use this in a journal. Oh, let me just grab a journal. Here's one. Uh, let's say you just want to open it to any page. Let me back up a little bit so you can see. Shoot. And you could just clip it onto a page with a paper clip or a bulldog clip, and it could be a removable. You could glue it down to a page, or you could also, um, you could glue it to the front cover, and it could be a little pocket that way, or you could have it open this way, or you could do the same thing with the back cover. Same thing. Or you could even clip it onto the back cover or front cover and have it to be a removable. So many options for your junk journals. All right, let's make one of these guys. Okay, let's get to it. Let's get to it. Let's get down and dirty. Okay, the hands are clean, admire, it's all over from here. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna move away this prettiness and reveal reality. Here's reality. <laughs> this is the work table. This is where it all happens. Okay, so what you wanna do is grab a book page. I've just grabbed a random book page. This one happens to be a botanical uh, book little bit so you can see the whole thing. Uh, but this book page um, is from The Wildflowers of the World by Barbara Everard, E-V, like ever, E-V-E-R-A-R-D. And if you're looking for this book, it's got great botanical images. But any, any book page will do. As you can see, this one just had regular writing on it and a few pictures. You can even use cardstock, um, something like that. I just goofed around with this one, but this is just a little thicker than regular paper. Cardstock will also work. So let's make our little envelope pouch. So what I'm going to do is fold it up. Okay. And you can make them any dimensions you want. I'm just going to eyeball everything. And uh, now I'm going to make my, my top flapper. This is a little trick to make your top flapper even on both sides. Okay. And uh, then we're just going to fold it over. And now we've got our little envelope pouch. So isn't that cute? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this very expensive handy dandy tool that hopefully uh, many of us do have, or they're not very expensive to purchase. It's just a regular circle punch, and I'm just gonna go around and punch some circles. And I would say, I'm probably doing them maybe, maybe half an inch apart would be a good guesstimate. You can do them closer or farther. It's totally up to you. It's random. They don't have to be exact. Uh, in the you know perfection or anything, I think you can you can make them that way, but totally up to you. Uh, 
I love to live in the world of non-perfection uh, because then I can make more things. <laughs> and I just feel very compelled to make a lot of things and I just love uh, playing with the paper. So um, however you choose to approach it, it's all good. And as long as you're having fun, that's all that matters. All right, just come down the home stretch here. All right. And the last one there. And then I'm also, I'll just show you prototype quickly. So I'm gonna do the front flapper too. So the front flapper here, just gonna go across here. Now, obviously you could make, you could design, you could go all the way around, you could do it different ways, but uh, this is the way I just thought I'd do it. I wanted to put enough bulk in there, but not too much. The seam binding will create a little bit of bulk, but it's not horrific. If you use thicker things to put through there, it might be a little thicker. Like if you use bias tape, it might be a little thicker, but um, uh, I think that, um, hmm, where am I? There it is. Okay, I'm gonna use seam binding, and seam binding is very thin, but you could also use um, thin yarns or eyelash trim yarn, something like that. That would look cute too. Uh, but this is what I'm gonna work with today, and all you need is one of these little guys. This is a, uh, a big-eyed uh, yarn needle or darning needle. So if you get one of these, it has a, like a softer end, a blunt end, so it doesn't poke you as you're sewing. Makes it very easy to sew, very easy to thread. And we've got these big giant holes here to aim for. So I'm telling you, anybody can do this. Um, if you haven't tried it yet, maybe today is the day to embrace uh, thread. See how easy that is? I'm like seven feet away from this <laughs> needle eye. Honestly, I'm standing up and it's way down here at the table. So it's very easy to thread. And uh, oh, I don't know if I have enough there. Well, let's see. Oh, that's wrong one. Wrong color. <laughs> Retreat. <laughs> Sorry. I was going to use pink. And uh, you can use any color that you have. Um, I, there was just some pink in here and I had some pink uh, seam binding. So it's just gonna, okay. So this is what that seam binding is. I got this in a, uh, I got this actually at a garage sale. I was out at a garage sale the other weekend and they had a big box of seam binding and she only wanted two bucks for it. And I'm like, <laughs> I'll take it, <laughs> sold. Um, okay, so, oops, okay. Now I'm trying to show you how easy it is and I dropped it. All right, there we go, now I'm in. And let's get sewing. Now this is, uh, it's probably a good idea just to use your bone folder or the edge of your scissors just to make your creases nice. Makes everything lay nice and flat and that way it will be less bulky in your journal. Okay, here we go. Pulling through. All right, you want to leave about maybe two to three inches of a tail hanging. Not even that long. It's just there. About that, that long. Yeah, like three inches. And then you always want to come from the bottom with the needle. Always. Because if there's some rule. Oh, drop my mic. Hang on. Oh, as if there's some rule. Um, just keep it uniform. Either always come from the bottom or always go from the top. Oh, keep, make sure you have your little tail there. And then just put snug, not tight. Don't not tear tight. If the paper tears below, and that did happen to me on the first one, what I did for a save, a rescue, I went in there with some washi tape and I just re-taped where it had broken through, folded it around the other side, smooshed it down, and then I had a little spot again and you can't even see it. So, that's a quick way out of that one. <laughs> All right, so let me just, uh, I'm just gonna go around this U here and sew these in and I'll just tell you a few things as we're doing this. I uploaded some more uh, vintage digital kits. Uh, there's two new ones to join the other four. If you haven't seen those in my Etsy store, please check them out. Um, if you like, uh, I have a lot of original vintage ephemera and I thought what a great way to share it with people that maybe cannot um, find vintage ephemera or cannot afford vintage ephemera or um, what have you not. There's not any in your area, something like that. But here you can uh, print it out. And uh, I've made little collections. And um, so I've got some that are mixed collections. They have vintage ledger and handwritten envelope or handwriting, handwritten letters, some envelopes. Um, what else is in there? Some, some have a, uh, prescriptions, uh, receipts, things like that, fun things. So you can find a few combination sets. Then there's one with... Um, uh, Victorian trade cards, the way they used to advertise back then, and they had beautiful images on the fronts of these trade cards, and people used to collect them and put them in scrapbooks, and they were just gorgeous pieces of art, so I put a bunch of those in there, a whole bunch in there, and five pages full, and um, then I uh, added yesterday some um, 
two different things. One, Victorian calling cards. This is a little calling card or a visiting card you would leave at somebody's house if you came to visit. And it was a little, just a little memoir that you were there. And it was very, it was common in the social worlds to do this in England and France and many places. And uh, these are the Victorian ones that have a lot of uh, uh, stylized decorating on them. They're uh, mostly from the late 1800s. And I believe there are 50 there, 10 on each page. And uh, they're kind of fun to check out. And uh, the other one I put in there was, um, uh, I'll do a video and show you what these look like so you have an idea. But um, the other one was uh, um, nature themed. So if you like nature, I made a page full of a lot of little nature phrases and nature quotes, things like that on a pretty floral background. And also there's a, one with a green background. And I also put some pretty nature pictures in there uh, to download as well if you're interested. And they're from uh, the... Um, they're old uh, public domain pictures, so it's just a little mini collection of them for, so that, you know, uh, you can also find these out there too, but if you don't want to be bothered looking, just, you know, this would be easier <laughs> if you if you don't want to be bothered looking. But yeah, anybody can find those things. They're great things to use um, and uh, just something to think about. Okay, so now I'm going to leave a little tail about the same length. Okay, I've done that. Okay, me. Yeah, okay, let me just... Let me just orient you a little more like that. Okay. And now here's a little trick um, to make this tying off so much easier. It's kind of like, what do you do when you get to this point? You very gingerly cut this into two pieces all the way down to the hole. Okay. Make sure it goes through the hole. And then um, you want to backtrack one of these through the other side. That's pretty easy to do. Of course, here we're going to say in that. And if you have any trouble doing it, you just grab your your needle and you go in there and you help it through okay of course i had no problem doing this yesterday and now i'm doing this okay oh, oh, pay attention here there we go okay so now i have one of these on one side and one on the other and you want to make it um so make sure that the hole it goes down to where the hole is so you get a nice flush tightness there all right. Oop, I almost got that one off. <laughs> okay. So now what you want to do is uh, be very careful you don't nip one off. If you do, you can always cut the, the thing in half again. All right. Do that. And then just probably do it the other way. I'm doing it the same way. So I'm going to right over left, left over right to have the non-slippage knot. And there we go. Okay. So that is anchored. And now this may be a two-parter. I'm not sure, but I'm going to try for one-parter. And we'll just see how we go. Can you see? Oops. Lost my mic. Got my mic. It's back. Okay. And we're back. And we're going to do the exact same thing with this one. Can you see? Okay. I'm going to zoom in a little closer so you can see this. Okay. There. Yep. There we go standing up here so you can see it okay okay those are two pieces now i'm gonna thread one back through push it through grab the little end okay all right so as long as you have one wing on one side and one wing on the other side you can anchor it and it's not going to go anywhere, which is kind of neat. One. Okay. Left over right, right over left. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Okay. There we go. Now, you can trim those a little more if you want to. And now we're just going to go zipping across the top here. There's my needle and my thread still all um, thingy. You probably, I've got a lot of this left, so you could probably do two of these per seam binding thingy. Okay. So now we're just going to slide on here. What else can I tell you while I'm sewing? Again, about two or three inches of a tail. Um, if you haven't gotten your free checklist, check out below each video in the drop down uh, description box for a link to a free checklist you can get for 
a list for journal supplies, uh, basic and advanced. This is something that I made um, as I was going through the years, starting to collect ideas of what could be put into a junk journal. It's pretty extensive. It's about seven or eight pages long. And um, you can either save it to your computer or print it out however you like, but uh, that's there for you for free. And it's also going to have the note to the bookmaker in the same link. So you'll get both. And um, the note of the book from the bookmaker is what I tuck, my little note I tuck in front of all my journals to help explain to the recipient of the journal what the journal is all about and different ways that they can use it. So that's kind of something fun to check out. And uh, any of the things that I use, like this darning needle and things like that, if you can't find these in your area at a Walmart or something or a Joann's, um, I put a link down below for these things um, just to make it easier for folks. You can check them out. And uh, that's in my Amazon store down below. Just click on the Amazon store and that'll be one click and you can see everything that's offered in the store. Um, okay, so I did that. Good. All right, so let's cut this. And we're going to do the same thing. All right, here we go. Cutting, cutting, and cutting. Okay. Now, get everybody out of the way. Oh, am I still super close? Yeah, I am. Look at that. Sorry if I was off screen there. Um, let me back up a little bit so you can see again. Um, yeah, I'm poking that through. Yeah, got it. Now that, see, that's how easy it should be. Yeah. All right. When things are going smooth, they go really smooth. Yep. We like that. And just tying that off. Okay. And I think I might shorten that up a little bit. Might be a little bit long. A little angle there. With this guy, same process. Can you see? Let me stick that there. Yep. You can see. Okay. You want to have your tail long enough so that uh, you can definitely go through and have enough room to tie. Okay. That looks pretty good. Okay. Back that up. And you can always use the needle to help pull it through. Let's say if you're having a hard time grabbing it from the other side, just use the needle to help um, push it through a little, little tip. So as you can see, it's very, very simple sewing technique. Nothing fancy here. Nothing fancy. But just cute as a button. I don't know. I just think these are so cute. And, uh, boop. Okay. So, there we have this. This is a little long. Let's trim this down a little bit. Little angle cuts. There we go. All right, we have that. Now, we could choose to ink this. We could choose not to ink it. I think it would look great either way. How are we doing on time? 17. Okay, so I think we can ink it up a little bit just to give it a little drama and I'll show you the um, the aging technique. So in this one, I think I'm going to use worn lipstick, walnut stain, distressing, distress oxides. Um, I don't know, maybe some, this has got blue on it. No, let's not go with blue. Let's go with some green because we've got a little green in here. Where'd the green go? There it is. Is that the green? Yeah. And this is forest moss. Okay. And I randomly go back and forth between the oxides and the, um, the inks because uh, I mean, it's almost all the same stuff. A little bit, you get a little more flexibility with the oxides because you can play with water and it's pigment and um, ink together, whereas the ink is just ink. So you're going to have a little bit different effect with that. Okay. So what am I looking for here? My brown one. Where'd my brown dauber go? Oh, found it, found it. Don't worry. I got, oh, jeez. All right, we're good. We're good, we're good. Okay, so I'm going to go around with walnut stain and just do some general ink inking just to give it a little bit more of an aged look. And uh, you could have done this before, but I also, it, it's fine if you do it now. It's going to age up the seam binding a little bit. Can you see? Yeah. It's going to age up the seam binding a little bit along with that, which I think kind of lends itself to the uh, the vintage look. I mean, the whole thing would have gotten worn if it was truly vintage. So, but not absolutely necessary. And maybe go around. Yeah. All right. Yep. And we'll just do this side getting a little more aggressive here with the inking 
team purposes, but that's okay. Can you see? Oh, almost. Okay, let me put you straight on kilter here. Okay, don't want to get off kilter, got to stay on kilter. What's a kilter? <laughs> Does anybody know? I'm sure it's something very important. Probably has to do with scales or something, I'm guessing. I have no idea what a kilter is. You know what a kilt is? <laughs> you don't want to get off your kilt. <laughs> well, sometimes you have to take your kilt off. Oh, I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about at this point. Okay, there we go. Doot, doot, doot. All right, so now if you want to do the inside of this, maybe you just want to use a little protector paper here. All right, so now let's say you want to add a, like a little bit more dimension. So I'm going to come in here with some green and maybe going to green up around the, the edges and just do some like random splotchers. Yeah, I'm not really thinking too hard about this. I'm just going in and giving it a little bit more. I'm going to be knocking down the white a little bit. I want it to be so white. I want this to look very old and vintage-y. Oh, get this thing so I can ink to town. This is just a please. It's the front page of some accounting book. And uh, so you kind of go where you see corners. You just give a little extra rub. And then maybe a little like random touching here and there to give it more of a aged appeal. Okay, just random, random. And uh, sometimes a little pop of a contrast color. Now you can use uh, coppers or rusts or whatever you like. Um, but I think I might add a little, should I add a little pink? Yeah, let's do it. Could also do a little bit of black to emphasize that. Oh, not the wrong one, figures. All right, we'll just pretend that never happened. Okay, so we carry on like little soldiers. All right, just a little touches here. This is just, yeah, barely anything, just for adding a little bit of a different color. No, 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 no. All right. All right. See so, you how know, that just brings a little bit of the pink all the way through. I didn't have a lot of pink on this side, but using a little bit of dye will, um, or ink will uh, create the effect that there's, there's a pinkish theme going on through here because I have the pinkish trim going around. Okay, now this up here, go back to the brown. Uh, I just, I'm just going to give it a little bit of random tamping just to knock it back a little bit, a little bit with the green. Okay, that's what a little bit of pink. What the heck? We're here and we're doing good. All right, and we're doing good on time. So now let's just see what we got so far. So this is kind of cute, isn't it? Yeah, and that could be used to house a few little goodies, but let's decorate her up a little bit just to say we did. Okay, so this one, I put some uh, a stamp, a uh, dried leaf, and a sticker. So let's kind of do something similar to that. And... Um, Let's see. Oh, we got a sticker. That's kind of pretty. That's nice. Oh, well, we could do this, but yeah. Um, I'm feeling that one. Yeah. Oh, this is kind of pretty too. Do I want to put my butterfly stickers in there? Oh, that's really pretty. Let's see what's going on at the back. Oh, I could put a butterfly right there or something. Oh, right. How about right there? That's kind of cool. Yeah. Okay. We'll put you there. All right. I am going to get this part. Here we go. The big test. Now that I have the backup test, something about tape or a pin. So I'm just going to say, I can do it. I can do it. I don't need the pen or the tape. I can do this all on my own because I'm a big girl. Yes, I can do it. Oh. All right, let me get the tape and the pen. <laughs> okay, I have a little piece of tape here. And this is supposed to make it much easier. You put it on the plastic side, not where the sticker is. But then... Nope, nothing. <laughs> all right, <laughs> try this one. Nope. Okay, let's try the pen. Hang on. Okay, I know I can I can say that the tape thing does work because it, it did work for me before, but now I'm going to try the pin. And then I'm just going to try a difference. Oh, this worked. Okay, we're in. Yes, totally. That split it up. And uh, I'm just going to put you there. I don't know why you have, don't have feet, but you are going to be there, my butterfly. And uh, let's put some things on the front. I'll put some stickers and stuff here. I did like that butterfly. Oh, you're pretty. We could put maybe you. Maybe we want. 
Maybe put that there or what do we got? What do we got? Oh, this is sort of pretty. But I think I'm going to stick a butterfly on the front because I might put my butterfly stickers in here, which I think would be a lot of fun. All right, let's see, how about you? Well, that could be pretty. Um, but you're actually here, we have a nice yellow one. He's gonna stand out more, so let's put him on here. All right, so now I'm gonna get the pin again. I don't know how to do this without stabbing yourself, I'm not sure. I'm just gonna try it on my own first, sometimes I get lucky. Okay, here, here we go. All right, hang on. <laughs> Okay, I started rolling with my thumb and that peeled this away and maybe that's the ticket. It peeled it right off, so. There, sticker is down and everything is good. And now let's put on a few other little thingies. Um, maybe a little, oh, that looks kind of cute, right? Yeah, let's put that on there, a little ticket of unknown origin. And let's get the old Art glitter glue. I heard some folks are having a hard time finding the art glitter glue lately. I have uh, two theories on that. Either uh, we all bought it out, which is a possibility, or um, uh, somebody also said that it doesn't ship well in the cold weather. So maybe they're not they're not making a lot right now because of the cold weather. But you know, I'm in Florida, so I can't I can't really vouch for that one. But um, hopefully, it will appear. Um, or maybe it has something to do with supply chain or something. Who knows what's going on? But uh, any glue will work here, so don't don't get too intimidated about that. Just find a glue and do it. Oh, I have this little washi tape here. Maybe I need to stick some of that on here. I'm just feeling compelled. All right. Should probably glue this. Just little random pieces. No real rhyme or reason here. It's looking as if that's holding down the uh, the ticket. And on the back, let's see, okay, put a stamp. This one, I thought maybe I would put maybe a label. That might be cool. I could write butterflies or something like that on there. Or I could put this one. Well, that looks kind of cool too. But I think I like that one. Oh, and I have this little thing. Let me bring some pink over. And maybe put that like that. That would be kind of cool. All right, let's do that. Okay, so um, I'm just going to ink these up briefly. Uh, I'm doing videos now. I'm putting them out. Uh, they're uploaded Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. And um, I, my podcast comes out Tuesdays and Thursdays. And I'm found on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, if you're looking for stuff, uh, now the podcast you can listen to on Apple or Google Podcasts or go straight to anchor.fm. There's links down below to all that if you want to uh, find those. Try to put everything at the bottom that I can think of below each video so that you guys can find it. And uh, uh, what else can I tell you? I can tell you that... Uh, Oh, we have a Facebook group. That's very fun. Come and check that out. I uh, do weekly and monthly challenges in there and everybody has fun making stuff and posting stuff and we get to see each other's pictures and ideas and their takes on these things. And um, uh, they're very supportive people. If you are having any questions regarding junk journaling, it's a great resource. I mean, it's just wonderful. People really jump in and try and help each other uh, to answer questions and stuff. So it's awesome. Come and check it out. A lot of fun, totally free. Just go to Facebook, click on uh, join the group and uh, come on over and play with us. All right. So there we go. We are playing with the papers. Um, so this, I would say I'm, I'm pretty much okay with that. I'm maybe I could stick something else on. No, I already have that there. Do I need that there? Oh, I could put that there. Nah, too much. Okay. <laughs> you know how these things go sometimes. And you can also stamp. So if you have some word stamps or some number stamps, so this is kind of more of a, a nature. Maybe I'm going to put the word dream on here somewhere. And I've got some, this little word stamp. And uh, I'll put the word dream. Yeah, how about that? That looks kind of cute, right? Yeah, I like that. All right, so let's just back it up here and take a look at both the ones that we made. Let me make sure to re-glue that or re-lid that. Okay. So here, oh, and I know what I wanted to do. I wanted to store a bunch of things in this one. So I just have my random things that I pulled out. And let's just say you're making a nature journal. And uh, wouldn't it be great to have your nature stickers in one of these and just stick it in here. And the next time you make a nature journal, 
boop, you just pull this out and you're ready to go. You've got all your stickers. So here's this one. This one might be more for a travel journal or an adventure journal or a pirate journal or a mystery journal or something like that. Um, so there you go. Here's two examples and these, you can make these a myriad of ways. They are super easy. I encourage you, even if you're a non-sewer, to uh, consider getting the, uh, the darning needle or the yard ne yarn needle. They're very easy to work with. You don't need any special skill set um, and they're a lot of fun. So I hope you're all having fun. They're going to put on pretty backing again <laughs> and having lots of fun with Reckless Abandon with your paper projects out there and take care everybody. I will be talking to you soon and um, always remember that fun can be simple and create with Reckless Abandon. Take care. Bye-bye.